Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Estrella Robocom robot with TV. It was made in uh, Brazil. The company that made it was the Estrella. Uh, 1960s vintage. It's fairly rare to find. This would be the second one that I've repaired for another collector. This one uh, belongs to Ozzy's Robots. <coughs> and uh, basically, you have walking action, uh, moving pictures, and uh, much like the Alps TV robot, it's uh, turned on when you uh, install the antenna on the top of the head. Like so. I'm going to get it closer so you can see some of the pictures on the screen. Here you can see you have your standard walking action <clears throat> and everything was controlled by the antenna. There's uh, two C cell batteries which get installed in here. The wires have to connect up to the switch up into the head. And we can show you a comparison. Let's do kind of a slideshow off my uh, laptop. <clears throat> I'll show you some inside pictures on uh, what I ended up having to do to it. Let's uh, get as much picture as we can. This, uh, this picture is off the website Alphadrome, just in case you wanted to see what the box looked like. But a nice thing that they have done down here is did a comparison between the uh, two. This would be the Alps TV robot, which runs this paper image, which is back illuminated in the Alps TV robot. It's a very complicated uh, system of running the paper in a loop through a series of, uh, well, it's just very complicated. <laughs> Here is the one that's in the Robo TV version from Estrella Brazil. And you see how they copied very much so. It's completely different and yet it's very much the same. They did a really good job of coming up with their own unique um, version of that. Let's uh, down to the pictures. When I first received the robot, the uh, lake linkages were severely, well it didn't run or do anything, but the leg linkages were very severely damaged. Here you can see it was one. One foot is sitting flat on there. This other foot is going to be tipped way up in the air. And uh, we'll get into more pictures that show some of the reasons for that. You can also see that the uh, toy had been worked on by someone else, but it looked like it actually was many, many years ago because uh, seam tabs were bent up and things were cranked and not closed. <clears throat> the uh, wires that initially ran up into the head part being as old as they are from the 1960s so I mean you're almost 60 years old at that point 50 to 60 had gone hard and cracked so this had to be replaced with new wiring but you can also see the uh, contacts in the uh, battery box funny thing is they they don't appear to have ever been plated they just seem to be raw steel so they tend to corrode. It's very unusual. Here's an inside look at the uh, gearbox. A good thing about uh, the gears in this robot is that they were in fact all metal. There aren't any plastic gears in here even down in the leg walking part it's still uh, that way. Um, need to replace the bulb that lit things up. And they had a hole up here that was big enough to accommodate a normal screw base bulb but then they had this bulb which very much resembles not so much a grain of wheat bulb like you'd see in old toys but more like a Christmas tree light type bulb. There was a lot of masking tape holding things together in places. Here's another view from the side. You can see it's a, a, a worm drive off the motor to the first set of gears. The motor itself from the side looks fairly standard, as we saw in the earlier picture, but the ends of the motor have these big brass blocks for uh, locking it in place. And uh, one of the problems with the toy, why it wouldn't run, is the motor was actually, I guess the toy had been hit so hard at some point that the motor was dislodged from the metal frame and one of the brass blocks wasn't even nested. There's a large clear plastic cylinder which sits down on top of this and then these tabs bend and that cylinder will have the uh, 
images, the artwork that we saw on it. Here's the cylinder, here's the tabs, here's the battery box part. <clears throat> this is uh, looking down inside the head once you remove the fiber board. This piece that I'm holding here in my hand would normally go clear up in here and then there would be a nut on the top of the robot because it, it's threaded where my hands are holding it. We'll get another picture of that in a minute. And that holds that in place so when you stick the antenna in it'll make a contact with this and then when the antenna goes all the way down it'll make a contact with that to close it. So there's the little threaded part. So I had to come up with a, a nut that would fit those threads. Now I believe the an original toy, the nut that was on there was perfectly square. I didn't come up with a square one, but I did come up with a nut that would fit. And it looks like at some point someone had kludged in, because this solder doesn't look factory, but then again, who knows, maybe it was, a little wiper. So when the antenna slides through this pipe, it actually had another wiper it could rub against to uh, make sure that it completes the circuit. Basically, here's all the parts in the teardown. Uh, I think we pretty much looked at most of this. Uh, this is the feet parts and the ratchets, and this stuff was all bent up, which was the main reason why the robot couldn't stand. Just some pictures going around the drum of the artwork. Gotta love that artwork. And these are just PP pictures of it uh, back together, but why, why look at pictures of it back together when we've got the toy right here? So, repairing the motor, replacing the light, fixing the bent leakage, repairing uh, linkage, uh, repairing the on off switch, getting it all put back together so the seams fit. It was a job. The only uh, broken pieces on it are at the, on some of the feet. For example, back here, there's some cracked plastic there. And on here, I made sure I put both of those to the rear so the toy would always display nice. Um, the original, of all the pictures I've seen of this a toy originally, instead of this gray plastic, I've seen the antennas in white, but the molding on this is correct, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on with that. The uh, shaft that was on this antenna when I received it was way too short. It was only about where my hand is right here. It was cut off about there. So there's no way the shaft that was on that antenna was full length or original, whichever way you want to look at it. Plus it was too rusted to ever work. So I ended up making a a new chrome shaft for this and a chain to keep the two uh, together so that uh, the toy could be played with once again. And you see here I believe originally the nut would have been completely square. At this point <clears throat> it wouldn't be worth trying to change that out to a square nut because that would mean you'd have to dismantle the head part and that fiber board. It's, it's quite involved to do all of that. So you don't think you want to do that. I'd have to get further back to get it all in the picture, huh? It's going to walk off the edge of the table, so I'm holding it. So, there you have it. The Estrella Robocom. Robot with TV.